What the? Hello, people from the world. It's Barry here from America Collector, your favorite European PokeTuber. And uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about the nonsense of Twilight Masquerade. Why do I say so? Well, you've seen, we've seen the prices the booster boxes has to reach. Now, I'm not saying I have an answer of what's going on. However, if we stop for a minute, we pause, we stop listening to every PokeTuber who says, oh, Twilight, I'm, I'm buying Twilight, Twilight's so great, I can find it for lower the market price, aka TG Player's price. Uh, it's, it's great, let's buy it, I want the Greninja. Let's take a look at what's happening with the singles. Why is a Twilight booster box so expensive? Why are singles in a Twilight booster box so expensive? So, I don't want to say change your mind, but try to give you some food for thought, as I like to do here on the channel. So, we know about the poor rates. And uh, as you can see already, we're going to compare in just a second Twilight with Temporal. Now, we know about the pool race, right? We know about the Greninja. Now, unarguably, as a collector, I will not argue that, for my personal taste, Greninja is a great looking card. Now, that with the fact that pool rates are pretty tough, which is actually uh, based on sample size with the G player to G Infinity, blah, 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 so on and so forth, they seem to be pretty close to what Temporal Forces pool rates are. Now, it looks like Temporals might be a bit easier. However, based on the fact that we did not open sufficient number of packs and considering estimation errors, we could assume in some way, shape, or form that the pull rates are pretty similar. Now, that being said, I still think Grinch is a great looking car, obviously for the collectors and not for the players. And that's when things get interesting. We have Teal Mask Ogre Point, which is, as you can see, $40 as of right now, which is played. You can not only check yourself, just asking your favorite friend on the internet called Google or ChatGPT if Teal Mask Ogre Point EX is played, but you can simply scroll down and at the bottom of the page, you'll see that the double rare Teal Mask is $8. That is a sign it is played. Just like the fact that an hyper rare is over $35. Buddy Buddy Poffin, right? Now, obviously, the more expensive cards you in the set, you could expect that the booster box price will rise, right? That's how it works on average. Now, Carmine, this is an interesting one. As you can see, it is selling for $100 in the US. Now, I wanted to show you European prices because what happens usually with English, uh, the EU tends to follow the US. So, usually, they usually like behind uh, a couple of days. Now, as you can see, they're a bit cheaper, but when you consider the exchange rate euros to dollar, euro is a bit stronger, almost a 1.1, um, about 1.08 as of right now, but that's not important. What is important is this comment right here, which I'll pause for you. Exactly, NIDE96 got it all along. Most likely that is why Kermine is 100 bucks. Am I interested in, in trainer cards? Absolutely not. If I'm looking for hot singles near me, I will not go on to TCG players. Now, that being said, Perrin, similar thing in my opinion. I looked at it and it does not appear to be played. So I would uh, call these two Waifu Fever. Now, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Now, another one to the list of playability is the Bermoon or Saluna. It is not as playable as the Tear Mask, but it does find space in a few decks, at least to my research, which explains partially the fact that it's $50, as well as do I like the artwork? Yes. Is it my favorite Pokemon? Absolutely not. Hence, with pull rates considered and all that sort of variables, I can see it being 50. I can see actually being a bit lower than that. Now, moving on, the list. Eevee. Why is Eevee? It, it displays 60. It was a, a bit more expensive than that, but let's say it is $60. Considering pull rates for Twilight Masquerade, it is just rare, which is as it'll pop us on the screen, courtesy of Mr. Master Set, about one out of 250 to pull a specific IR, which is actually very similar to Temporal Forces pull rates. Now, if you think about Paradox and Pull the Evolve, which had the toughest pull rates, as you probably saw from that table, and you think that Groudon is $60, then there is something odd. Now, pull rates are not everything. There's demand. Demand will drive prices up and down. Demand is much more important than supply. You can have a card that is limited to one copy. If you have no buyer, hence no demand, no one will buy it and you will never sell it. Demand is more important than supply. However, let's be realistic, guys. This card out of the gate, let's go under the free months, has been doing nothing but going up. 
Now, could this be the fact that people love the Eevee, which you could argue it's true, or could this be what I like to call the Moonbeam's fever? Not up to me to say. Now, moving on to what I had to say to prove my point, which by the way, if you're still watching, there's gonna be a live stream this Saturday at 8 p.m. London's time, and I'm gonna have the first guest on the channel aboard. So it's gonna be a nice interview, a nice chat, and uh, I'll make an, the official announcement ASAP, and you can join the Discord if you want to stay updated for the more. Now, moving on, we talked about the heel mask. Now here with the other mask, you see that as people don't care about them, uh, they're $20. Now you could say, well, it's better $20, still a pretty decent price. Yes, it is. But considering pull rates, it basically matches the prices of the least expensive SIR in the portal, being Iron Boulder and uh, Salvatore. Now, you can see that people don't care about these guys because the Sinistra EX is more expensive. With equal pull rate and most likely equal supply, this card is more expensive than the three masks. Hence, most likely, you could safely assume demand is higher for this car. Hence, people like it more. That's what it's all about. Now, here with the Blood Moisture Luna, Hyper Air, as well as the Teal Mask Ogre Pond, you can see how they are played because they are amongst the most expensive Hyper Air, which, don't get me wrong, Hyper Air are, uh, if I'm not mistaken, harder to pull, if not as tough to pull, depends on the set, as SIRs. So they're pretty tough to pull, but the fact they're much cheaper, it simply means that people don't like them, which is uh, unarguably a smart thing to do. I mean, are, are they good looking? Mm, not really. I would much rather pref prefer an SIR teal mask over an hyper rare, just based on artworks, which again, we're focusing about collectability. Collectability, uh, who cares about playability? Who cares if this card is gonna get you world champion this August in a Y? I mean, good for you, but if you wanna invest, I would highly focus on collectability, you not know, on playability, which apparently is something that uh, people still didn't get out there. At least that's what I saw. Now, transitioning into illustration rares. You got the Infernap, you got the Chansey, you, you got the Australian Growlithe, Tatsugiri. People like it because it's expensive, so you can see people like it. And not my favorite, favorite. Pinsir, you could argue it's a pretty good one. And then the list kind of uh, falls apart because I don't see any relevant IRs, as well as you guys don't see it, the market doesn't see it because they start to get really cheap. So you got the Eevee, you got the Chansey, you got the Growlithe, you got the Infernape, and you could argue people like the Tatsugiri as well, about five IRs, which obviously they portray the most known, the fan favorite Pokemon, right? If people will like their Pokemon, if they like the artwork, they're gonna buy it, hence demand, hence price is gonna move up. That's all, that's all it's all about. Well, you need to ask yourself if it goes up before because of demand coming from playability or collectability. That's what I have seen people not quite understand. Now, what is my point? My point is, I'll say it straight, Temporal Forces, which is uh, still in uh, Down to Earth prices, which I think it's fairly priced. I just think Twilight is uh, overpriced at the current time because of playability. I mean, it is fairly priced because of playability because if you consider, as I basically just stated, the prices of the cards within the set, the booster box is fairly priced. However, once you those cards are not longer playable, what is gonna happen? What's gonna happen to the boxes you're now uh, beloving and buying because you think Twilight is the best set ever to be made by humankind and uh, they're no longer playable and they're no longer expensive and nobody wants them anymore. Now, Temporal is a great example of collectability. Raging Bolt, yes, it is playable, but before the spike, which got it $200, if, if you forgot about it, um, I made a video on it even uh, 20, 69 months ago, it was still about $50 before the spike. Now, Iron Crown come down back to earth, which is normal, was something we, we want to see. This set has been out for uh, almost six months. $60, Walking Wake, Gudgeon Fire, Island Leaves, and then Iron Boulder. So, apart from the Raging Bolt, which, again, Playable, I personally like the artworks, but I am not the market, even though I consider myself not too knowledgeable when it comes to Pokemon, but uh, I do know math and uh, I do know finance because of my studies and my experience. So that's what I try to bring on the channel. And uh, if you browse around on my channel, you'll find some pretty decent videos that go into technicals of Pokemon investing, such as this one, which will be popping up somewhere. Now, 
Moving on. Morty's. Morty's, yes, it is a trainer. You guys know I'm not a trainer's fan, just like I talk with Carmine and Perrin. But it has a Gengar. But it's a trainer, so I'm not going to give it any point. So we're already at 6 SIR Pokemon, which I think is my opinion. But it's also the market's opinion. They're all priced higher than the SIR that are not playable, right? So apart from the Greninja, which is the chase card, the Pokemon SIR that are not playable are these four right here. So from the Sinensia downward up till the Earth Flame Mask Ogre Point. So you have four SIR that are not playable. Pokemon of Sardona is kind of like a Raging Bolt. It is playable, but it's people also like to collect it. And, and then you have the trainers, which I'm not taking into consideration because, well, within the common on card market, uh, that's probably why they are expensive. But still, you have a nice selection here with the Mortis, the Biancas, and the Airy. Now, moving on to Obsession Rares. You have a Ghastly, you have the Metagross, you have a Chinchino, Sawsbuck, Arbok, Liden, which I'm not a big fan to be honest, even though it, it is $6, but I'll stick to 5 Then obviously, if you have a Chinchino, you gotta have a Chino, 6 gotta have the Drilling that goes with the Sawsbuck, then you got the Drampa, you got the Lickitung, and the Shave Cream. And then, things start to fade away. So, my point is, I talked already too much. When it comes to collectability, Ace 12 must create even better than other sets such as Temporal Forces and Polity Evolved. Or is this hype around Twilight all about the fact that people don't realize many cards within the set are playable and that's why booster boxes are more expensive than the other sets I mentioned. Now, do I think Twilight is a good set? Yes, I do think it's a good set. I don't think it's a great set. And I don't think Temporal nor Poldia are any worse than Twilight. That's my opinion. Now, the market may prove me wrong. The market may prove me right. However, what's important is, guys, stay away from FOMO. Stay away from hype. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Arrivederci.